Hi, and welcome to our podcast. This is Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca, and this is a podcast that we talk about everything senior-related, not just stuff for Gainesville, Florida, but for seniors anywhere. And today I have a special guest, uh, Dr. Stephanie Lord from Community Hospice and Palliative Care, who comes well um, versed in both hospice and palliative care. And um, I see in your bio that you were a gator. I'm a, a three-time gator, college medical Three school time. and residency. Holy so cow. I've been in Gainesville a long time. Do you bleed orange and blue? Absolutely. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about what drew you to uh, med school. Wow. Well, um, no one's asked me that in a really long time. <laughs> but um, I had some illnesses, chronic illnesses as a kid. And I had good experiences, fortunately, with my physicians. Oh, and, wow. And um, that's actually how I ended up going into medicine. Nobody in my family had been in medicine. So it just kind of you got intrigued by your own illness and you said, hey, I'm going to, you know, figure out how to make everybody better. And Mostly intrigued by the great care I had by my pediatricians as a kid. That's really I mean, that really was the cool. thing, really wanting to emulate them. That's really awesome. Have you ever been able to go back and tell them that? Um, you know, I did. Like 25, 30 years ago. Um, I did. I, awesome. I visited the pediatrician's office and found the ones that were still around. That's awesome. I And I didn't even bring you on here to talk about this, but <laughs> I know that community has had some great experiences with um, being able to help children through hospice and palliative care needs. Yes, we do have a large pediatric program, mm -hmm. uh, primarily in the Jacksonville area, but we are um, coming into this market as well where we know we have a lot of children at Shands and elsewhere that can certainly use our support as well. Yes, and it is such a beautiful um, gift of service to the families and to the person, the patient. So, uh, so hospice is near and dear to my heart. Um, and you and I both know that I would say almost no one understands the difference between hospice and palliative care. And I mean, I totally get the confusion because hospice is palliative care, mm -hmm. but palliative care doesn't always mean hospice. Right. So I wanted to bring you on so we could talk about that and people could really understand what palliative care is. Terrific. So is there a, a real kind of easy way to look at it? Well, I think so. I mean, palliative care is the big if you're thinking of, a, if you, everybody knows what a Venn diagram is, you know, mm -hmm. the yes. one circle, the big circle is palliative care. And that's basically care that's focused on symptom management, okay. relief of symptoms, and helping people to feel better. Okay. Hospice is a small part of that. So in the, in the Venn diagram, that would be a little part right. um, of it where palliative care that's focused on people at the end of life would be hospice. Gotcha. So okay. palliative care itself can be with any serious illness okay. at any stage of the illness where we help people who have trouble with symptom management and with navigating the difficult healthcare systems and helping them plan for the future. Okay. And, and hospice is for the very end of life, the last six months of life, where, where there's a separate, um, very large, supportive, interdisciplinary team that can help people through that last six months of life. And what I love about palliative care, and a lot of people do not understand this benefit that's out there, is that you can still be seeking curative measures and, um, and, and be able to have the palliative care team watching out for you, right? Exactly. So that's why we say any serious illness, and it can be as soon as a serious illness is diagnosed, um, you can be seen by a palliative care specialist, where again, they'll help you with symptom management, whether it's physical symptoms, if it's stress, and also help you navigate the sometimes really complicated uh, combination of specialists that you have to go to right. and what everything means and who does what. And then also, again, helping plan for the future for when things are more difficult down the line, mm -hmm. helping to sort of sort out values and goals for the future, for your future care. Right. Okay. So um, is that something that's covered by insurance? So the vast majority of time, yes. Medicare covers it. Regular Medicaid covers it, mm -hmm. and most commercial insurances cover it. Um, there are some, you know, Medicare Advantage or Medicaid something, something, something that may not right, totally right. cover it, but the vast majority do. 
Um, but it's like a doctor's office visit. So you okay. may have to pay a copay with palliative care. Okay. You don't with hospice. Hospice is a separate benefit. Right. But with right. palliative care, so there may be a copay. It's like a doctor's visit. Okay. Except okay. people can come to you. I was just going to say, so <laughs> is there an office people need to go to? Right. But there isn't. Well, we have we have all kinds of models. So okay. Palliative care can be provided in a lot of different places. We do palliative care consults in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. We right. see That's palliative right. care patients at their homes. Mm -hmm. We see them in if they live in a nursing home or an assisted living facility. And we also um, we do a clinic right now in um, an oncology practice where we see some patients in their in their other doctor's office in their oncology practice. So we have a wide range of models, and palliative care basically. Can be provided anywhere. That's wonderful. And you, as the medical director, are kind of looking over all of that stuff, right? So right. if you've got somebody that is, for example, uh, they're seeking cancer treatment mm -hmm. um, and they've got cancer treatment going on, but they may also have heart issues and they may have COPD um, and there may be all kinds of things where, you know, they're seeing different specialists all the time. Right. Um, they're getting uh, different medications. There may be overlap in medications. But you actually kind of ride herd over the whole mix. Right. right? And, and we supplement the primary care doctor. If someone mm -hmm. has an involved primary care doctor, we don't try to take over exactly. what they do. But we yeah. can supplement them with some specialty um, level symptom management. Mm -hmm. And also, again, to just help them navigate things. Yeah. If it's somebody, if it's a patient who has a very active primary care doctor, our palliative care uh, provider will reach out to that palli to the primary care doctor and coordinate care with them. Yes. So it's a supplement to that, not necessarily instead of. Right. Of course, some people don't have a primary care doctor, and then we take a little bit bigger role in those patients. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's truly wonderful. I think it's a great gift to um, any of your patients that are still seeking cure, yeah. but just need that extra. It's that just extra another layer health. of support. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yep. And then um, one of the things that I've noticed is that, you know, you may have someone who's been seeking palliative care and they've been, they've been very successful with that. And at some point, you know, the way that it goes in the med world, um, maybe things aren't going quite the way that everybody expected. And, um, they may need those hospice care services. Having been already in the palliative care, having had you um, already involved in their care so much, does that help, do you think, at that oh, time? Oh, absolutely. It, it makes the transition much easier mm -hmm. and smoother, um, both logistically and just emotionally. Right, right. Psychologically. So if they, you know, they already get, they already know our practitioners, they're comfortable, right. they yep. have a phone number to reach out to. If things are getting worse where, you know, they've decided, you know, I just don't want to go back to that heart doctor anymore or I just don't want another trip to the hospital and, right. you know, I really am done, then um, we can easily make a quick phone call, have somebody from our hospice team go out and do an evaluation, yep. kind of, you know, coordinate amongst us. And if we feel the patient is hospice appropriate and they want to pursue hospice care, at that point we can just switch them from palliative to hospice with it just, Very little trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes if they are on palliative care and they're having a rough day, um, do they need to go straight to the ER? No, or? that's one of the great benefits yeah. of palliative care. Depending on what their individual goals are, right. um, if, they're, if they strongly want to stay home, we can usually send somebody out and, you know, assess their symptoms and see if we can manage it at home. And that's wonderful. What a gift. Right. Especially when you've got somebody, you know, we deal a lot with seniors that are in assisted living or in skilled nursing facilities, and they just want to stay put in the home of their choice. Absolutely. And they don't want to keep going to the hospital every other day, you know. Right. So I think that's a great, great um, piece of what you guys do. Now, you and I talked a little bit about um, uh, stories, Mm -hmm. everybody's got a story, and sometimes a story just paints such a great picture. Can you share a story? Sure. I was Yeah, I was thinking about it on my way over here. So I was thinking about a woman that we did, um, I think a, it just went as well as it could go, and um, so I just wanted to share that one. So it was a lady around 70 years old who had chronic lung disease, um, emphysema, mm -hmm. and she had had a couple of hospitalizations, you know, in the previous few months, and on, like, the third hospitalization, um, she was referred to our palliative care program. And one of our palliative care nurse practitioners saw her in the hospital. 
and, you know, got to know her a little bit, um, talked to her about the program, and then followed her as an outpatient once she got home. And that went on for about, oh, I would say six to eight months. And during that time, um, she helped her manage her symptoms at home or shortness That's of awesome. breath, um, kept her from going to the ER a couple of times by treating her That's at home. That's wonderful. <laughs> and... Um, but over time, oh, and also helped her with advanced care planning. So that's another thing they do. She she filled out yes. a living will. She appointed one. Her husband had passed away, so she appointed one of her children who lives locally as her health care surrogate so okay. that when she couldn't make a decision any longer, then her daughter would know what to do and, and would have you know, legal authority to make decisions. And over time, she started to get worse, and she started to develop heart problems. Sometimes the lungs mm-hmm. will put a strain on the heart and cause heart right. disease. Yep. Well, at that point, she decided she did not want to go through the big workup that was recommended um, by her lung doctor for her heart. Right. And she just decided she wanted to stay at home and wanted to know if we could help her do that. So at that point, with what had happened with her heart, and we were able to assess that we thought she was eligible for hospice, we were able to put her on the hospice program. And um, we have a full team of, you know, a full interdisciplinary team on the hospice program which includes doctors, nurse practitioners, nurses, social workers, home health aides, chaplains. Volunteers. Volunteers. Even. <laughs> absolutely. Volunteers are a big part. And we were able to keep her at home. Wonderful. And as, her, as, her, as she got weaker over the next few months, she moved in with her daughter. Mm-hmm. And we were able to provide extra support in the home with, with that staff and manage her symptoms through for the rest of her life. And oh, I love it. She ended up dying... So we got her oxygen. We got a hospital bed for her when she was not, unable to get up and move around. And she ended up living maybe seven, eight months when she was on hospice. We don't kick people out after six months, although right, right. That's the, the <laughs> we're supposed to say they have. We say they have a prognosis of six months or less, but that's a very inexact science. Right. So she lived about seven or eight months after that and was able to die in her own bed in her own bedroom. And exactly the, how she wanted, yeah, very comfortably. That was her choice. And that and was that's her choice. Beautiful. I did want to talk about that a little bit. Um, community does have a wonderful tool that does help people to kind of put together um, whatever your wishes and your dreams and desires are for that end of life care. And it's not just for seniors, right. it's for anybody. In fact, I was talking to my children as they're turning 18. That's an important piece for us to yes, have for them because now they're adults. So we need to know, you know, what is your wish? What is your desire? We all hope nothing bad is going to happen to us in life, but you just never know when you might not be able to speak for yourself. Exactly. And it's not so. just about having a serious illness when you're talking about a living will. Mm-hmm. I mean, any anybody could get in a car accident at any time. Um, yeah. I made a living will when I had my first child, and that's a Smart. good time to do it. Or just, you said, like anybody over 18 yeah. should give it some thought and put things down in writing and assign a, um, someone to be your decision maker if something happens yeah. to you and you can't decide for yeah. yourself. Um, and community offers those booklets we do. F- for free. And we also offer someone to help facilitate go through the bo- to go through okay. the booklet with you. So it's called Honoring Choices. Okay. Um, it's a program that... Um, we, we co-sponsor with a, mm-hmm. with a company out of Wisconsin, I believe, and um, they give a, like a step-by-step instruction manual on how to choose a healthcare surrogate and how to answer or, and to answer questions that help determine your values and your preferences when you can okay. no longer speak for yourself if you're getting if you develop a terminal or uh, an end-stage illness. Right. And we right. have facilitators who can meet with you, and it's absolutely free of charge. Okay. Who could meet with you virtually, over the phone, or in person, and actually help go through that. They're trained facilitators. Okay. That can go through the booklet and help people uh, fill them out. That's great. So how can people find that? They go to the community hospice website? You can go website? to the website or call the main okay. phone number. And it's called Honoring Choices. Honoring Choices. That or Advanced Care Planning is the big you know, umbrella mm-hmm. term, and Honoring mm-hmm. Choices is that particular booklet and, and program. And then once that is filled out, you simply share that with those people that are closest to you so that they've got it on exactly. hand. And it doesn't require a lawyer or a notary. It just right. requires other adults to witness it. Which and is great. so the state of Florida allows that to make it simpler that people don't have to go find a lawyer or a notary. You just make copies and share it with your physician, your important family uh, members, okay. anybody who would, you know, be involved if you developed a serious illness or injury. So that's a good idea to make copies and share it with your physician. Absolutely. Just in case that family member isn't around 
um, to pull That's that out. That's exactly right. Yeah. We frequently Smart. hear people say, I have one, but I don't know where it is, or there's no one there hey, that can go get it. That sounds like my so. house. <laughs> <laughs> so it is good to share copies with all the important people, including your physician. Okay. That's great. I love that. Well, is there anything else that you can think of that you really want to share with our listeners that has to do with palliative care um, that might make a difference to somebody that's kind of sitting in their home today and thinking, hey, I could use just a little extra help and support. Well, I think, you know, it can't hurt to reach out and get some information. I think so that's great. So with our palliative care program and our hospice program, we can give phone information visits, we can give in-person mm-hmm. information visits, or virtual information visits. So if people are interested, if they reach out to one of our numbers, we have toll-free numbers, Okay. Um, we can give them information and, and schedule a visit if they're interested. Okay, that sounds great. So they don't even have That's to go. That's free of charge. <laughs> and they don't have to go through their physician to start that conversation. Palliative care is referral-based. Okay. Um, but so we can do. always reach out to a physician. If if, okay. they're, if someone wants to self-refer, we can always be the one to reach out to the physician okay. and ask for the referral. That's what I was wondering. Hospice can be self-referral, family referral, no physician needed. Mm-hmm. Um, we go back on the back end to determine whether someone's eligible, but right. they can self-refer and start the process. Okay. All right. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. And thank you so much for having me. If we get any questions, I will be reaching out to you to see if we can have you come back again some Absolutely. other time. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. And for those of you paying attention at home, if you would like and share, and if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps me out. And I look forward to seeing you again some other day.